I'm God. Rather, he makes it clear, like in Matthew, in Matthew chapter 21, verse 11, and in Mark chapter 6, verse 4, he says that I'm a prophet of God. No, that's the Islamic narrative. Also, you also know the New the, Testament. The New Testament, yeah, yeah probably. Nice. Yeah, I know it. I know it. So, like, for example, he himself, Christ, points to someone other than himself as God. In John 17, 3, he says, For this is eternal life, that they may know you as the only true God, and whom you have sent, the messenger, Jesus Christ, uh, which is what we believe he is. Okay, fair enough. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, as, as because you've been compelled to show some interest, yeah. we look at definitions from in the Bible. When you say, when you ask Christians, well, who is Jesus? Oh, uh, 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 he's God, he's God uh, <laughs> son of God. Even son of God literally means in the Bible, one who represents God. Yeah. It doesn't carry any divine, divine connotation to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the definition is given in Matthew 5 verse 9, which says, yeah. terminology in effect is given to ones who represent God. Yeah. Now notice the subtle distinguishing factor between son of God versus God the Son. God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, which is never mentioned for Jesus or for that matter for anyone else in the Bible. So God the Son was a later formulation that Christ is the second part of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But the term God the Son is never mentioned for Jesus in the Bible. You get God the Father, but you never get God the Holy Ghost. So what we say, we invite you back to worshipping God alone. The, the, yeah, the one. We, you know, we can use, Jesus is a conduit, he's a prophet. So what he says in the Bible, I seek not to do my will, but the will of God who has sent me. Okay. Of my own free will, would I can do... Like Mohammed, then, Precisely, so right on. Yeah. Look at that look, <laughs> over there. One message, yeah. prophets yeah, of Allah, Muhammad. Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus and Muhammad. So we say peace be upon them okay. as a mark of... Um, um, honor to them and uh, as a mark of respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were never God. Muhammad upon whom be peace, just a simple messenger of God, a yeah, prophet yeah, yeah. similar to Jesus, Abraham, Moses and so forth. Yeah. Man is never a God. The Bible defines that as well, yeah. that man is never a God. Yeah. So personally I've seen a lot of similarities in a lot of religions but I've also, I've, the Quran you never really get to read. So but you've got a, yeah, so you've got a free copy. There's a, yeah, there's a, there's a similarity. Personally, I'm not a big believer in any religion. No, I'm not, you have whatever beliefs you want to believe in. Yeah. Personally, I see a correlation between all of them. Um, and that's why, yeah, that's why I've got this, because I've, I've, I've not learned, say, the Muslim side of it. I've, I've learned the Christian side of it. I've seen the Buddhist side of it. But I've never, never had the chance to sort of check. How we believe Islam is so unique, it's, it's Muslims or the Quranic narrative is God is unlike his creation. Okay. Number one. So as we guys speak together, if I raise my hands out towards yourselves, yeah. what have we got in between? We've got space, matter, time, atoms, molecules, um, you know, everything you can comprehend. And that came as a result of the Big Bang. Everything came forth 13.8 billion years ago. What initiated the Big Bang? How did it come about? It required a conscious will. That's, that's what, I'm not a person that disbelieves there can be a higher power, but yeah. as I say, I'm more of a... Agnostic. Hasn't been, yeah, it hasn't been proven yet, so I'm, I'm open to it. And well, that's why it's called faith. Yeah. But, but at the well, same time, look at... Okay, so check this out guys, it's simple, it's a simple equation, it's nothing too difficult. There are three or four possibilities. Yeah. A universe from nothing. Yeah. Nothing means the absence of absolutely everything and anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that possible? Is no. that plausible? No. no. <laughs> Did the universe create itself? How can something inanimate create itself? Does that make any sense? Yeah, that so the universe sense. couldn't have said, okay, I'll create you now, universe. It makes no sense. Yeah. Then you ask, okay, fair enough. What's your idea? Oh, we believe in God. Who created God? Well, the question itself is redundant. Why? Because if we have an infinite past series of events, yeah. we will never come into the present. Make sense? Yeah. We would never come. So that dismisses the concept of infinite regression. So the only thing plausibility, when the universe came into existence some 13.8 billion years ago, something initiated, something so powerful even beyond the universe, yeah. which is incomprehensible. And that is what we remit to our creator. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, so we've dismissed the other possibilities because even the atheist has got to jump on them, well, jump off the fence and say, well, you know, I believe a universe came from blah, blah, blah. The Big Bang. The Big Bang. Yeah, so but on its own. On its own. On its own. <laughs> exactly. Make any sense? Yeah. <laughs> Does that make any sense? No. A Big Bang on its own doesn't no. make any sense at all. I must say, even the whole like evolution from monkeys, I'm like, but 
but we still have monkeys. So yeah. <laughs> No, no, but the point, but the point being is that if, well, you know we just simply to negate, we simply go back right to the beginning, a universe like you just we just laughed it off yeah. from nothing, which is ridiculous, yeah. because in itself nothing is the absence of absolutely everything. Yeah. So how can the abs if you said to me, uh, listen mate, I, I need twenty quid, I'm, I'm a few quid short, and I said I haven't got any, I haven't got anything money on me, none of my friends have, none of my friends have, I've got nothing in the bank, how am I going to give you twenty quid? Yeah, yeah I'm not gonna, you so can't you can't. Make nothing out Nothing. Precisely. <laughs> now, guys, this is this. Is, so once we've once you've been satisfied that there's a creator, because the other, what's the other? So because you said you're uncertain, what's the other plausibility? I don't know. There's many of possibilities. Like Nobody's, what? There is no, there is no specific thing that has personally proven it to me. As I say, I'm interested in this to see what the Muslim perspective on it is. The, I've seen that you, I got. As a child, obviously growing up in England, you get hammered with the Christian perspective. Yeah. Then I've, I've looked at partial bits of the Buddhist perspective of it. I'm still collecting information. It's so, quite simple. Listen, in terms of the creation, we've gone through just the three possibilities. If you could tell me there's another possibility, I'd like to hear it. Yeah. I've, I've yet to hear it. So there's one, the universe created itself. Two, a universe from nothing, which is incomprehensible. Three, someone created the universe, or something was there. Like you said in, at the beginning, yeah. you believe this. Rain of power. Rain of power, oh, which yeah, is beyond. There could be, but as I say, until it is, as you say, agnostic, mm -hmm. until it's been but, sort of put in front of you. Not, yeah, not, yeah, you yeah, not even proof. proven, but <laughs> when there's evidence, or more evidence of that, yes. maybe there is already evidence of that. I think the philosophy, so, because science so, can only go so far in terms of its empiricism meaning what it can show to you in terms of its uh, uh, ability to show. However, what we observe here is that this is beyond science as well. This, is, this delves into the, into the philosophy of science, in which they can never comprehend this, a universe simply from that. I think we've fathomed it out between yeah. us. And I think our friend here needs to fathom it out as well, in the sense that we've, had, we've looked at three possible, so an atheist, just say you're still unsure. What the, so what we've done, we've dismissed the other two because the universe came into the existence, we've dismissed the possibility that it could have come about from nothing, which is totally absurd. Did the universe create itself? I don't think so, because the universe is an in animus. How can something create itself? Did, you, did for example, uh, you know, did, um, did your, for example, did you create your mother? No. No, it's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah. So it makes, so yeah. what we then, we're only left with one viable alternative, that something initiated the universe, something beyond, these elements that came forth, helium yeah, yeah, yeah. and hydrogen. I, I, have you followed what I've said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. now, yeah. If that in itself leaves us with only one possible conclusion. So what we say is that everything is contingent upon something else. And it's only something which is outside of that set of contingent things. That for example, us three, we could be, I don't know, sitting somewhere in Russia, for example. Me and you could be female, this lady could be a male. But the fact is that we are, existing in this particular way there has to be something outside of that set of contingent things yeah, which has made us this way yeah that's true makes yeah. sense yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so what i'm saying trying to say to you my friend the other possibility so the only one option is something so supernatural has occurred even the atheists in retrospect accept, accept that it was a supernatural event yeah. but we've then dismissed what the other po what the possibilities of that supernatural event would have been and there could be only be one possibility of a creator who is beyond the universe more infant because it makes sense this creator would be more infinitesimally more powerful than the universe because it was created by it yeah, yeah. Yeah. see so we're dismissing all the other plausibilities you see yeah. hence yeah. now what we're looking at we're looking at a creator now now suppose you're satisfied with that explanation yeah even though you say you need further evidence but we've dismissed that so as Sherlock Holmes once said I think if I recall if you dismiss all the other possibilities whatever remains must be true yeah. so that yeah. then suggest yep yeah. so that then tells us that there must be so bearing in mind that creator does it make any sense that he's created all of us for jest or for no purpose whatsoever no. makes no sense whatsoever no. does it yeah. so it makes more sense uh, yeah and then imagine he's gonna tell us all right guys I made you I'll see you in a few thousand years and I'll judge you and I won't give you any form of um, uh, you know, methodology of living. So the analogy I like to give, which I've done so many times, is this mobile phone. Pretend you've never seen a mobile phone before. I hand it over to you. I, I tell you, and no one's ever seen a mobile. I said, you can speak through this device to someone 12,000 miles away in Australia. They're going to think, all right, show me it. So I can hand it over to you. Then I'm going to say to you, operate it. What's the first thing you're going to ask me about how to operate it? 
how do I? Like, what how do I? You need yeah, you yeah exactly. Do? So you get in, instruction sheet. You'd ask for yeah. instruction sheet, a manual. Yeah. This is this is what. This is what I'm coming to. Yeah. What I've believed throughout a lot, for a long time is you have the Bible, the Quran. I'm not quite sure what the Jewish scripts are. Old Testament. The old, yeah, and then obviously the Buddhist. Yeah. Now, personally, the links between them, there's a lot of similarities that something happened, say, thousands of years ago, that people have used these books as, what for a better word, a self-help book, a guidance through life. Excellent. Which, as I say, how but you want to like live your life. also has been used to control people at the same time. No matter what you get, you're going to get people that take advantage of any yeah. situation yeah. you are going to get. Yeah. Say, there are extremists that use the Quran for a, a bad way. There are and people, the Christians, Christians yeah. the, the whole sort of, like yeah. there are people that are going to take advantage and use something from their perspective yes. to do, well, not good, to do evil, basically. But then you're going to get people that use it as a self-help book and a guidance through life. So, as I say, I personally... I think it's nice to believe you, in it is. Your than, your perspective. It, it's, yeah, I because say it's yeah, because it's like we. To, okay. Like, it's not. It's not turned me. I, I I appreciate your perspective, and that's why I've got this to see to study sure. more. Sure. Study more. What yeah. you would find in commonality between the three faiths is that there is an understanding of a one creator mm -hmm. who's yeah. unseen. God God. Always God. Yeah, always the bottom God. line is don't be a dick. <laughs> don't be a dick to others, and people won't be a dick to you. That is fair enough. But, but yeah. at the same time, we have to also acknowledge our creator as well. Yeah. Oh, a yeah, one yeah, supreme yeah, being yeah, yeah. and then to give yeah. gratitude for yeah. example you've got two lovely eyes just as your uh, friend has as well if yeah. i offer you 50 million quid for both your eyes no. you can never see it again would you accept it no. not a jolly chance no. I'm a okay i'd rather you take my eyes and my ears to be fair yeah yeah and you yeah. give 50 million. what are you going to do with it what are you going to do with it if i took your eyes you can't see or you can't hear it either you were just saying how are you going to see it come on uh, come on I mean, I know Ray Charles is in the crow's nest. Let's take in the mic. <laughs> right. Let's get into the let's get let's get into the uh, the gist of the matter then. So then God then sells us revelation upon telling us how one is expected to lead one's life. Now you made an interesting point about control. We as human beings have to acknowledge a creator and give gratitude. So I just gave the analogy of the eyes. Who would give? I wouldn't. If you offer me the whole world, I want to give my eyes sight. You have to be crazy to even even consider it. Not that I'm saying. Anything. But anyway, <laughs> so in that particular context that creator is worthy of worship. The air that we breathe, we couldn't, we couldn't survive a millisecond with the fact that 78% of the air is nitrogen. There's certain bit of oxygen. If there was a quarter of a percent less of such and such, we wouldn't be able to breathe. Yeah. It's all conducive to life being... Um, then could you, what would your perspective on Druids be? The people that actually sort of, they believe in obviously mother nature and that is their bottom line that is their sort of deity is mother nature and but where does, the but then man. when you connect so it to where does mother nature come from yeah, precise that's exactly well so they just the earth and they that's that's precise they give thanks. what we've that's done we've we've, we've, we've to, cut we've yeah. we've cut the shaft and we've gone right to the uh, right to the initial point which yeah. is the beginning the unit we've yeah. summarized it as well yeah. so what i'm saying to you basically is that god's guidance in all the scriptures was to worship him alone the jews had that but they transgressed the christians then to an extreme by associating a man as god although he never made that claim islam comes as god's final law to mankind inviting mankind to worship god and god alone so we pray five times a day as yeah. a mark of recognition that god is worthy of that pray okay, praise yeah, yeah, yeah. and that is something that the prophets that is in the one thing I give you guys props for yeah. is your dedication. Yeah. Yes. Now, the, the, the dedication that yeah the Muslim community has, you have to respect it. I appreciate those sentiments. It, yeah. But what I'd like, but as a per, but you're also a fellow human being yeah. as your yeah. son, I've got concern for you as well. So I would like you also to in, envelop that because 100 years ago, none of us were here. Yeah. And another 100 years, it's highly likely you'll be here. So in the inter intermittent period, we are then going to oh, be. I'm, I'm going to Walt Disney right now. I'm getting quiet. I'm getting quiet. <laughs> anyway, sir, we've got to go. Okay, it's been great speaking to you. All the best to you. Take care of yourself. Bye bye.